dignitaries of the dais. Um, it's a hard act to follow what, what just happened. So uh, I'll do my best to keep the time. Um, I, I think Dr. Anil and uh, Dr. Barthavarsan pretty much covered what I have to say. Um, but let me take a moment, just explain some of the things that they touched upon. And, and I, have, I will start with a little bit about myself. And I, I was told that I'm an Air Force officer, but actually Naval officer some years ago. Um, but I'm basically an engineer. I've spent uh, most of my time engineering work. Um, I started National Instruments, so I have, I have some experience. Uh, what does it take to start a small office or a small venture uh, in India? I went through that journey myself. Today, uh, we are um, no longer called a small company in India, a little bigger. So we, um, uh, I, I went through the journey. Uh, I think one of the other things that I have been doing uh, for the last 17 years, working closely with uh, the academic institutions, uh, many of you probably know us our, and our work in this area. <coughs> But uh, the reason why we do this work with the uh, education institutions is primarily because we build uh, tools for engineers and scientists. And we believe uh, these tools are going to be in the hands of engineers and scientists, will allow you to invent, discover new things, a new way to solve uh, the challenges that the human are facing. And we also believe that engineers and scientists are the ones that's going to help us uh, protect things in the world, solve problems uh, that the humans are facing. Um, and and uh, I have been fortunately involved in many of these things that you saw in the video. There are a few that I'm going to share with you. And, uh, and maybe try to inspire many of you who are here in the educational space to help inspire budding entrepreneurs, innovators to do something about what we are facing today. At my job at National Instruments, I spend most of my time working with customers using this technology and learning how they have using this technology and what problems are they trying to solve. So it has really been an immensely satisfying, rewarding experience seeing this technology being used. Uh, and, and the kind of problems uh, these uh, scientists and engineers are solving. And I've, you know, some of the examples that we, we were involved, CERN, uh, if you heard about the big hadron collider. Uh, when I first watched the television program uh, at my home, sitting and listening to the, the invention of the God's particle, uh, in my heart I knew that we were involved in that process an invention of the um, God, uh, God's first, uh, of how the, um, uh, the uh, creation of Earth, creation of the universe was uh, being studied. Um, there are things like the SpaceX, we are now involved in helping uh, rockets to carry satellites to, the, um, to space. Deep sea uh, discovery of people we are involved in in, 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 and that exploration of creating vehicles uh, that can travel very deep sea and find things that we haven't been able to find so far. And many of you probably know about the five gener fifth generation communication systems. And I think universities, educational institutions are going to play a very key role in defining the, the challenges that the fifth generation or 5G research that's been called uh, are, are being done at this point about high density communication, millimeter wave technologies and so on. So we are passionately involved. Our team is working very hard closely with some of these university researchers that's happening today. So uh, it's very rewarding to see these things happening. Um, but I have a take on what is, what's happening, uh, whatever is happening. Uh, I feel like many of the technologies that are currently being served, uh, we are consuming them. Uh, and I think this is an opportunity at the same time. I feel like many of them are over-serving us, uh, some of them are under-serving us uh, because of cost reasons. Um, and these are normally designed and developed by Western world in mind. And we are probably using them as, as a consumer of those technology. And I feel this is a great opportunity 
for Indian innovators and entrepreneurs to find the right innovation, right technology that would help us in the current context. Why I say that is because uh, our challenges in India are completely different from, from those, when the time of those development that happened for those technologies, it had a different context in which those innovations happened. Um, so that gives us an enormous opportunity to reinvent the same problem, solve the same problem by reinventing a new technology. Why? Because we can do that because there are a few things that have changed in this world and it's going to be important to understand computing processing has changed dramatically, networking, our ability to connect and communicate is changed and the importance of software in, in all this. So this three combination is a, is a phenomenal cocktail in creating new innovation platforms and allows you to solve some of these you know, some of the problems that already been solved, but it's a, it, it, you can come up with a new point. Uh, the innovation is important in the current context because our demography is different, our cost points are different, our simplicity of usages are different. So I, I'm going to share with you some of the examples of what, I, what this really means. So let me take a couple of examples. Uh, you saw in the, in the video there was this milk application. So currently, uh, as I understood, um, India is the largest producer of dairy products. We, we probably produce the largest number of, the largest amount of milk, and we, we are the most consumers, we are the largest consumer of dairy products. But our farming system is very different from the Western world. So the, the milk that is produced is processed very differently and usually the, the farmers in the West have large number of cows at one farm and they have automated um, milk extraction processes and storage processes. And that's not the case with uh, our farming system. Uh, we, we have uh, farmers which maybe two or three cows and they milk them twice a day and they carry that milk uh, probably to the nearest chilling place, a collection center and that could be something like 10 to 15 kilometers away, and they may have to carry this uh, in a cycle or maybe at times walk with the milk. So in the process, the milk with our tropical temperature, the, the milk usually gets spoiled. And it's interesting that, that if innovations have to happen, then you really need to get down and understand the issue. If you stay abstracted, it's very difficult for you to understand and innovate. In this case, and, and an engineer understood the problem because he really knew the real issue is about the, the milk is getting spoiled as it's traveled a certain distance in a tropical weather. So the idea was to build very low cost chillers that you can put it in a village close by so it takes hardly any time it can be put into a chiller. And now the, the issue is how do you build a chiller that is really low cost meant for low capacity, closer to the, uh, closer to the, facility, uh, the producing center. Uh, that's what has been solved. Chillers existed already. It is not, it's not, it's not new. Uh, but our villages don't have power continuously generated, so they had put a diesel generator, often breaks down, and, and there is no diesel, whatever. So you need to put a reliable source of power along with the chiller closer to the, uh, in the village. So that's a problem that is solved. Today there are about 1,000 such chillers in India. And like, like the previous speaker said, we don't hear about that. There is not an innovation, no one hears about it. We, we hear about the larger co companies. This is the local innovation that, that happens or still happening in India as we speak. So great. Another one that I want to share with you um, is, is really, it's more of an institutional innovation and it's not an entrepreneurial innovation, but it's yet an innovation. Once again, you really have to understand the issue that we are facing to be able to really get down on figuring out how to solve that problem. And I would encourage, as faculties and institutions, some of your students really have to get out in the, from the compounds of your university, go, go, go out to the villages, find, and we have plenty of problems to solve. 
And when you go down, really understand the issue, then it comes down to a drawing board, figuring out how to solve the problem, because today the technology and access to technology are not a problem for us. It is really defining the issue, is the real issue of uh, what, what is the real issue that we need to solve. So let me share with the other uh, innovation that, that we were involved in. So I heard IIT Chennai has a, um, you heard that IIT Chennai has an incubation center or an innovation center. Uh, it's, it's, it's called HTIC, it's called Healthcare Technology Innovation Center. Uh, so we've been working closely with them, and they have a charter to solve some of the uh, medical uh, issues, such as the cataract issues in villages. Uh, one of the problems that we have is the uh, cardio illness in the villages, and, and it's harder to get access to those uh, patients because it's, they just don't have healthcare facility in the villages. So the equipment that is diagnosed this illness costs forty thousand dollars, and it's simply not affordable for rural folks to access those instruments and measure them. Uh, and the innovation was about creating an alternate technique of doing or uh, diagnosing the same illness through an ultrasound, very low cost. So one problem is to solve the issue of finding the illness, but then how do you give that instrument into a hand of a person uh, who is going, going out and making those measurements. So we know there are ASHA workers that goes out, so the, this device has to be really simple. Simple to use, low cost, and what is supposed to be a $40,000 equipment now is about $1,000. So that's the reduction, and that is innovation. So they, they now have the product tested, verified, proven, and goes into production. Uh, working with other medical distributing companies, they're now going to launch that product out into the market. So this would be given out to the ASHA workers who could connect, collect, who could do the diagnostics, send the data to a, a, an expert doctor who can diagnose the illness. So these are, I mean, the, for us, these are very inspirational things that we, we see happening in the, in the industry. Um, but I also know one more thing about innovations is, uh, uh, the innovations that happen with such severe constraints, cost, ease of use, uh, simplicity, uh, those kind of technology will definitely find space in global market. Uh, and I, I know for a fact there are multiple case studies that has been published, talk about Indian innovations that can really scale, not just constraints of India, but across the world. So that's, that's the beauty of what, what we are trying to do now. So let, let, me, let me also play a little bit of a devil's advocate. Uh, there are some good sides I've been hearing about, and I think we have, as a team, uh, all of you here, uh, we have to at times look at ourselves and maybe be a little more critical at, of ourselves and how we are doing. Um, like I said in the beginning, I have been uh, involved with the education. My team has been involved with education because, because of the kind of things that we do. And we are real market is scientists and engineers. And if you don't have good scientists and engineers, we don't do a good job. So it's important that we find these good engineers and scientists. So, and therefore, I've been working closely with uh, many educational institutions for the last 17 years. Um, the, the, I think we have done enough with the universities we went, we are doing, we have done. As we speak, I have about five professors from different universities in my campus, in my office, uh, and they're doing internship. Uh, usually that's not common. You teach normally, uh, the internship is normally given to students, but we give internship to the faculties because it's important. They understand, like I said, if they understand it well, they can touch many students, and that's why we think it's important they've spent our time uh, that has high productive highly productive in our office, teach them our technology, uh, teach them how to solve some of the things, we teach them about business aspects so they go out and uh, be, uh, be helpful to the students. We have done, uh, we taught a, a course, a three credit course um, in, in some of the colleges in Coimbatore. Our engineers will fly in the weekends and the campus was, 
gracious, they brought the students during the weekends. We would teach the course. Now it is up to the universities to take that course and teach to the students. So we are really bringing the latest technology to the, uh, to the students today. And, and the other day, I was watching a football match with my son. Uh, this is the Northern Ireland team, and they showed the population. There were 1.8 million people in the whole country of Northern Ireland, and they have a football team playing in the European uh, League of, of Championship. And I, I thought to myself, wow, we have uh, 1.2 billion, 1.25 billion. That's many, many times bigger. Why don't we have a team? Of, why don't we play in such, uh, such type of football? And so I asked my son, who is just 12th, grade and I asked him what do you think the reason is and he gave me some exam he said well you know the reason is by our, our teachers are not very inspirational they don't tell us to go play uh, we don't have the facilities to to learn to uh, my parents you don't allow me to go out and, and play the football mice you know so he gave me a, a few things that, and then I sat back and I realized wow that's exactly true because that's why we don't have a a football team that, that can really play in a, in a Premier League. In fact, it is also true for our innovation space. Because think about it, we have probably the largest number of universities that are out there. The number of engineering students that are coming out is, is phenomenal. But why is that? We don't have as many innovation uh, as, we, as they have it in Silicon Valley, they're saying. And I think it's probably because of the ecosystem that's created, the, the kind of tolerance, the kind of expectation people have understood uh, in an entrepreneurial venture. Uh, it's, it's very easy to create an incubation center. Someone can put some money, uh, the industry can sponsor some uh, labs. You know, you, you will have a lab, it's easy. Uh, it, it, the hardest part, the hardest thing, I think there are two hard problems, at least in the Indian context. One is this finding this great spirited entrepreneur who really want to solve a problem. Uh, and, and really the solving the problem is trying to do something to the society better than what it is currently being served. If you can find something that, I have an idea that will serve this market better than what is currently being served through technology. And if you find that, you have a great, uh, great opportunity to be an innovator. But the, but the one problem that I, I see, the hardest problem, is really to find this great entrepreneur innovator. And if you find someone, you should almost put him in an ambulance, put him in a siren, and you should get a separate lane. And can we do that? Can we find that person? And it's really hard to be a great entrepreneur in India. The second, I think that's, that's about you. I, I, and I think it's already been said, this is not a nine to five job. Great companies don't work nine to five. You would, if you come to National Instruments at 10 o'clock, you would see someone working there. And believe me, I don't tell them to work at nine o'clock. No, at 10 o'clock, I don't tell them, you know, 10 p.m. I would tell them to go home. But they would, they have, they are connected to their customers. They want to solve the problem the customer has. And your case is the same thing. You have a, your customer is your students. And your job is to inspire them. Get them out. Find a solution, a problem to solve. If you can do one guy to do that from all your college, one person. I heard 10,000 uh, 10, universities or oh, something like that. That's a large number. It would be a different place. So I just want to leave you with this thought. Think about, inspire one student that you, you think you can apply to. You will change in India. Thank you very much.